Hello everyone, my name is Ryan. Uh, I'm here in the Sons and Daughters Library at SNDHQ in Los Angeles, um, which is just to say in front of my personal book collection in my apartment. Uh, I am the founder and editor, uh, the founding editor, if you will, of Sons and Daughters, um, and I'm here to read some poems for you. I know some of you that have been following us for a while, or even some people I've been corresponding with, um, have not yet seen my face, so this is your, uh, your meeting, your first meeting with my moving image. Uh, here it is. Enjoy it. Um, I would, before we get to the poetry, I would like to say quickly uh, thank you to all of you who have followed along uh, with S and D from the beginning, and even those who have been following along a little bit more recently, um, and I would like to give a profound and eternal thanks to the poets who have appeared on the website. Without you guys, the poets, sons and daughters would not have the voice or identity that it does. So I want to thank you uh, for that. And I want to thank the poets that, are be, that will be appearing uh, in this virtual reading series. Uh, and with that, um, I'll read some poems. The first of these is called Leiva, and it is kind of a, a, a belief statement of sorts. Hoagland's white whale stares back. He is unopened, unexplored. Behind him lies a rope of pages, red, unread of many colors, catching the gaze of a crusader, a Dutch star, empty, is predestined to the left. Across plateaus sits Derrida, and baskets of actors and booming composers form the bedrocks of the casts. London, Paris, and JFK, presidential appropriations above the profits of the lost generation. The 20th century intelligentsia is gathered. Above it all, there is a howl from an old Franciscan. That poem uh, is featured on the website, so you can read it there um, if you'd like. This next poem is also featured on the website, uh, and it is called Hair. Barbershop. Empty, save a mother waiting, a boy in the barber's chair. The barber. The boy sits anxious, and the barber digs his shear into the side of the boy's head, circumference of a young mind squeezed into itself. Blood or sweat falls from the shorn hair. Squirming feet squeak metal chair. Blue, white, and red swirl on the pole outside. The boy is close to tears when the haircut ends. Hair everywhere. Being handed a Tootsie Roll, he puts it in his trembling teeth and chews. Hair. Touch the ear, suspended, collar obscured, protected only by the wink of the dean. Clouded vision clears through the sweep of the scalp. Thick darkness cloaks the skull, exploiting one's own weakness. Tears mingle with sweat. Salt and soul tremor to the floor at the suggestion of an overdue spin in the scissor man's chair. The class bell rings and the young file out. It hasn't hidden the canal. A shaggy mop past the shoulders, his lover's hand clenches it back, the other hand behind his neck, one hand on his, her hip to hold her. Her blonde bob just enough for a fistful, his back to the board of bed. She lowers herself, picks up steam, until simultaneous gasp, chins jerk upward as both drag fists down. The shuddering bed stills, framed pictures now on the floor. His fingers go through the thatch of his manhood's home. Over a dram, 
Head in hand, the new country cut left a jagged the dreamscape's roof. Shadowing by window and siren, the shortest existence since the long road from halo to breast commenced. Sweeping the strands from sixteen brushed away the self, leaving a clean shop floor to form from foot to crown the man to live anew. The growth begins again. That one, like I said, is also on the website. Um, and you can check it out if you'd like, along with a bunch of other good poetry from a lot of other fantastic poets, some of which we may be hearing uh, from later in this series, I hope. This next one is called Bonded, and it is uh, an attempt to set up a dialogue uh, with a poem by Ray Armentrout. That poem goes by a similar name. There is pathos there when beams from ahead can't keep up with the curve of the road. I never noticed. Bend the history of time and of my life against a wall, and I will find my country illuminated by the glow of a TV in the corner of an empty pharmacy. This next poem is a nautical poem. It's called Anchor. Iron spider's legs from the divots in my back, piercing either spinal side to hold me upright, in place unmovable. Breast to God, teeth bared down, unbreakable concrete boots scraped across the ground. Shoulders thrust through air, stiff step staggers to the forward mark. I speak my line, growled through anger, blurred through pain, poised for attack, frozen in decay, pop the cap of the glass. Turn the page with the bottle. Two elderly New Yorkers skip to the end when they talk about life. The world's chef is gone. He took the common thread that was tied to his eye. The respect of worlds dies in the sleepless window of the modern empire. And empty plates fill with tears and with rope. Death pulls the quilt over the western world and reads us the story of American fascism that thrives and bends the arc of history toward the end. Immobile sculptures from the marble of the mattress, silent scream to the moon, land shakes and waves, my bones bubble to the reef that weighs down the earth with a sand-washed anchor. Steam rises, silent roar, trembling. Spindled legs of shell take flight. Uh, this next one is an exercise in personism, and it's called Frankly. It was 11.52 a.m. when I walked through the bustling city and found no sign of anyone. I was on my way to meet you, though I didn't know it, and was wandering through town to the Tyneside Cafe. I found my seat by the window and waited for my usual beverage, but it never came. I had forgotten to order. Ordering seemed a strange thing to do in this cafe on this day, in this country, in the rain. Instead, after I put my jacket behind me, I turned and you turned and the earth did not turn, and it gave us through the window the moment of stillness through which we saw each other's eyes. My inhale was all I heard, your eyes all I saw. Between heartbeats, the silence jarred me, your gaze held me, then blinked. Before the fully opened eye, there was blue. There was you. The bus outside sped up, the kettle grew louder, and I saw the city smoke obscure your existence. The rotation continued, and I blinked. It was 11.58 a.m., 
12.43 passed by the window of the newsagent I was in, down by Central Station. I picked up a magazine with Harrison Ford on the cover. This would make a nice gift, I thought, and wondered if I could have given it to you. If a half-smile applied to gift and giver, which would you prefer to take on the bus, wherever you were going? Would a grin be enough to keep the smoke away? A cigarette burning at the next rain-stained table caught my eye. It was smoking outside the Crown Posada, and smoking it was you. I reached for the magazine in my jacket pocket as you turned. I left the magazine on the table when I saw it wasn't you. It was 1.36 a.m. Let's see here, I have, I think, a couple more, two more. Uh, this one is my newest poem, and it's called Cloth Coverings. How very topical. goes like this. Food outside my door waits to be welcomed. My window is quiet but for birds, less noisy than the angel's heart is known. Necessity is all that draws us out, but I am curled in you. Increments of intimacy return between mandated distance. We are not alone, but all I see is you. The angel's heart folds open into a path etched with feet. Each step a portrait, lifetimes long, winding through mansion hills and Hollywood that wraps me around you. There are people. There are people. Before they disappeared, I went to Wilshire and then Oxford. I found a spot I realized I knew. I sent you here once while I waited near some leaves that float in a pot in the middle of the road. I am here now for juice. A place forgotten, freshly laid on my eyes. I inhabited that space like I now inhabit you. I take another painted step into a room where whispers beg to scream. We battle against its walls, asserting our existence. Nothing comes but us when I am steeped until bitter in you. Years and fifteen minutes bring me to my home today, waiting for my phone to ring. I might pick it up. The future is six feet behind, but if you burn away with the fever of the nation, I'll be here making tea and wondering what to do. Okay, uh, one more. This is about my favorite place in the world. Um, at least that was what was uh, that was what inspired it when it was written. It might be about something else now. Um, and it goes like this. Fuck the sentimentality of dead, white-haired, white-eyed, white-skinned men as if penitent for being in the present. The occasion of now sits firmly in the chest of those who are awake and free of fear. The occasion of now is persistently built on the delicate membrane of the heart and the steady heave of the lungs. The occasion of now is one that I will nestle between my eyes and my feet. The occasion of now is one I will build by the bay. By the bay is where it will reside if it is possible to bring back the city of my memory to rebuild. Hills will roll through time and place. The flowers will bombard streets down winding pavement. Golden Boy points down to now. I will once again traverse the peninsula for the treasures of St. Francis that belong in the present. Browning maps will lead the way to the present. Tourist shops will flurry the senses and I will reap the lessons of the sun. I hear the heart, I hear the beats through the haze of smoke and fog that rolls in from the sea and protects the two-peaked passage into the city where I will build now. I pine for San Francisco. 
Together we will live in the wind. That one is called San Francisco Pine. Um, and that's the last one I have. So thank you for listening. Thank you for enjoying Sons and Daughters and reaching out to me uh, to let me know that you enjoy Sons and Daughters. That means a lot to me. Um, I'm very happy to see what it's become and people all over the world uh, enjoying it. Uh, it's, it. It's truly fantastic. Um, and maybe these types of video things may become a regular thing. We'll see who's to say. I guess I am to say. Um, but if you'd like to see some more video content, uh, let me know. You can contact us through our social channels on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, we have a contact page on the website. Uh, let me know what you want to see. Maybe we can pick a poetic concept together, or a poet, or a poem, and, we, and I'll talk about it. Maybe we could do a Q&A, maybe a lecture series, who knows? The possibilities are, uh, you know, limitless within the means of our ability. <laughs> um, anyway, look out for more videos in this series. Thanks again, sons and daughters. We're all around you. <laughs>